Dear students, welcome to the SDK Health Sciences Biochemistry classes. Today our topic is Bioenergetics, Oxidative Phosphorylation, Shuttle Pathway, Shuttle Mechanism for NADH. First of all, we will define Bioenergetics. Bioenergetics is the study of energy transformation that took place during the biochemical reaction. It is also called Biochemical Thermodynamics. The human and animal metabolic system capture chemical energy from food stuff such as carbohydrate, lipid and proteins and then use this chemical energy to power the living uh, processes. So this is the food stuff, carbohydrate, lipid and protein and these are the metabolic processes and then during the metabolic processes they get energy and this energy is utilized for living processes processes. This study of energy system is known as bioenergetics. Now energy is in the form of energy is in the form of ATP. So human being, human being, food stuff, carbohydrate, lipid, protein, then metabolic process, metabolic process, then energy. This energy is in the form of ATP. How we get energy? The process is called phosphorylation. Phosphorylation. So, the living system utilizes food stuff like carbohydrate, lipid and protein. They put all these carbohydrate, lipid and protein into the metabolic processes. With the metabolic processes, they release energy. This energy is in the form of ATP. The process by which we get this ATP is known as phosphorylation. How many types of the phosphorylation are there? Two types of the phosphorylation are there. One is substrate level phosphorylation, another is oxidative phosphorylation. One is substrate level phosphorylation and another is oxidative phosphorylation. So, let me summarize it here. Carbohydrate, a lipid protein, broken down in the catabolic process to water, smaller molecule, water, carbon dioxide and ammonia and release energy in the form of direct form that is ATP. This mechanism is called substrate level phosphorylation or indirectly they release hydrogen. These hydrogen are accepted by the hydrogen acceptors and then when they accept the hydrogen they become reduced and these reduced equivalents enter into the mitochondria and in the mitochondria they enter into the electron transport chain and then in the electron transport chain they give us more energy. So this system is called oxidative phosphorylation. So as we said phosphorylation is of two types. One is substrate level phosphorylation another is oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation. Now, substrate level phosphorylation, what happened here in the substrate level phosphorylation? The energy is generated at the site of the reaction. So, reaction in the reaction, A is converted, substrate A is converted into product B. When substrate A is converted into product B with the help of some enzyme, this much amount of the energy is released that it attach inorganic phosphate with the ADP to form ATP. As this reaction is so much powerful that it causes the release of so much energy that that can adhere, that can attach this phosphate, inorganic phosphate or phosphate directly which is coming from the source with the ADP and make ATP. This type of the phosphorylation is called substrate level phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation. So what happened here? What happened here in the substrate level phosphorylation? That a high energy bond is formed while the substrate is being oxidized. 
ATP is then generated at the expense of this high energy bond. So what happened here? That for example, in a reaction substrate A is converted into product B and then during this conversion ADP is phosphorylated to make ATP because the ATP is synthesized during the reaction at the site of the substrate that's why we call it substrate level phosphorylation. What are the examples? We have some examples for this. Say for example 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3 phosphoglycerate with the help of enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase one of the phosphate which was at the position 1 will go and attach to this ADP and then this ADP will be converted into ATP. We will see the pictorial, exam, uh, pictorial examples in, the, in, in a few seconds. Another example is phosphoenol pyruvate with the help of enzyme pyruvate kinase will convert into enol pyruvate, pyruvate and then what will happen? This phospho, phosphate of the phosphoenol pyruvate, this phosphate of the phosphoenol pyruvate will attach to this ATP and then it will convert into ATP. These two are the example of glycolysis pathway. Glycolysis pathway. The third example is of citric acid cycle pathway. Succinyl CoA. This reaction is so much powerful, which is catalyzed by the enzyme succinate thiokinase, that it will adhere one inorganic phosphate and adhere this inorganic phosphate with the ADP to make ATP and convert succinyl coin to succinic acid. So this is the reaction of TCA cycle or citric acid cycle. This is the example. Example number one. 1,3 base phosphoglycerate. See here, these are th th three carbon compound. 1, 2, and 3. Position number 1 has a phosphate. Position number 3 has a phosphate. 1,3 base phosphoglycerate. And then, with the help of enzyme, phosphoglycerate kinase. Phosphoglycerate kinase. Position 1 phosphate will come and attach to this one to make ATP. And then 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate is converted into 3-phosphoglycerate. This is called substrate level phosphorylation. Another example, phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate or enol pyruvate. So this is phosphoenol pyruvate. At position 2, there is a phosphate here. 3-carbon compound. 3-carbon compound. With the help of enzyme pyruvate kinase, this phosphate will come and attach to ADP, the ADP will convert into ATP and then phosphoenol pyruvate will convert into pyruvate. And this is the another example of substrate level phosphorylation. The third reaction which was a TCA cycle reaction, which is a TCA cycle reaction where a succinyl CoA, 4 carbon compound, carbon 1, 2, 3 and 4 carbon compound is converted into succinate, it's converted into succinate and then with the help of enzyme succinate thiokinase. Now this reaction is again high energy reaction, a powerful reaction and it will bring inorganic phosphate attached to ADP and then convert it into ATP. CoA will be released. This is again an example of substrate level phosphorylation. So, we say that ATP is formed by the phosphorylation process, phosphorylation and phosphorylation is of two types. One is substrate level phosphorylation, another is oxidative phosphorylation. Substrate level phosphorylation took place at the site of the reaction, at the site of the reaction whether it is mitochondria or cytoplasm. However, oxidative phosphorylation only took place in mitochondria. Mitochondria. So, oxidative phosphorylation. Or, we also, we also, we will also see the electron transport chain or the respiratory chain. 
So oxidative phosphorylation it is a process by which ATP is formed as electrons are transferred from NADH reducing equivalent or FADH2 reducing equivalent to oxygen with the help of the series of electron carriers and this mechanism took place in electron transport chain it is also called respiratory chain and it is present in the inside of the mitochondria inner mitochondria inner mitochondrial membrane like this so here the electron etc is present this is the etc complex the system is carried out by the help of the enzyme and electron carriers and these electron carriers and enzyme are located here in the inner mitochondrial membrane inner mitochondrial membrane in the electron transport chain in the electron transport chain so the process is very simple the process is very simple say for example here we oxidize the carbohydrate fat and protein we know that there will be different mechanisms we can get energy directly in the form of ATP we can have NADPH which will be used for synthetic processes the end product will be carbon dioxide to water and ammonia like this but in the middle of the way what will happen hydrogen will also be released as this we discussed earlier and this hydrogen will be captured by the hydrogen acceptor like NAD and FAD NAD will take hydrogen and will convert into NADH2, NADH and H, one is ionic form, another FAD will convert into FADH, FADH2 and then these reducing equivalents, if they are inside the mitochondria, there is no issue because they are also, they are present in the mitochondria and then they will be, they will enter into the electron transport chain and when they will enter into the electron transport chain, they will release their hydrogen they will release their hydrogen and they become oxidized. So NADH will convert into NAD, NADH will convert into NAD and FADH will convert into by releasing its hydrogen FAD. And this hydrogen will enter into the electron transport chain and will the movement of these electron transport chain in this cycle they release energy and this energy is so much that it will pick the inorganic phosphate attached with the ADP and this process is called phosphorylation so they will make ATP because this phosphorylation is a combination with the oxidation so that's why it's called oxidative phosphorylation so it has two components number one is oxidation oxidation of the food stuff energy release energy release and then this energy release cause the phosphorylation ADP plus inorganic phosphate to ATP. So it is a coupled mechanism. It is a coupled mechanism. Oxidation plus phosphorylation. So this part is oxidation and the rest of the part is for the, the, the rest of the part is phosphorylation. So this is an example. Say for example this is succinate, succinic acid. With the help of enzyme succinate dehydrogenase, NAD this is oxidized NAD will convert into NADH. Two hydrogen will be taken from the succinate from here and from here. See, it will convert into the substrate will convert into product that is fumarate. Now these two hydrogen will come to attach with the NAD hydrogen acceptor, one in ionic form. So NAD plus NH and it will enter into the electron transport chain. NAD will be relieved and the hydrogen will enter into the ETC electron transport chain it will release energy and this energy will adhere in organic phosphate to the ADP to make ATP and this process is called phosphorylation now as I said earlier if if NAD and FAD they are in the mitochondria they are in the mitochondria like this is mitochondria and NAD, say for example let me make it in this way that this is mitochondria this is mitochondria 
and NAD, FAD, they are inside in the mitochondria. So there is no issue. They will go directly to the electron transport chain and then they will release their electron and then there will be release of energy and there will be phosphorylation. So this is not the issue. It's very simple mechanism. But say for example, this NAD is present in the cytoplasm, cytosol. If it is in the, in the, it is present in the cytosol, say for example, the process of glycolysis, the process of glycolysis which took place in the cytoplasm, glucose to pyruvate and during glucose to pyruvate in one of the step, NAD will convert into NADH and H. Now, in order to get energy from this NADH, we need to transfer this NADH into mitochondria. We need to transfer this NADH into mitochondria. But the issue is here that this NADH is not permeable to the mitochondrial membrane. It cannot enter into the mitochondria. It can no, cannot go inside to the mitochondria. So then how we will shift this NADH which is present in the cytoplasm into the mitochondria? Or should we transfer the complete NADH from cytoplasm to the mitochondria? Because we just need electron inside. We need electron in the electron transport chain. So this is the this is the this is the question now. This is the question now. So what happened in this situation? That when the mitochondria is not permeable to this NADH or hydrogen and this is mitochondria so there are some shuttle pathways there are some shuttle pathways shuttle, shuttle system is there or shuttle pathways are there these shuttle pathways they take these hydrogen and then they transfer this hydrogen into the mitochondria or this electron into the mitochondria and when they transfer these into the mitochondria so then they enter into the electron transport chain and when they enter into the electron transport chain so they move in the electron transport chain and when they move in the electron transport chain so they provide us energy in the form of it. We say that one NADH, one NADH, when it enters into the electron transport chain, it provides us three ATP. The recent study says two point five ATP, and one FADH, when it enters into the electron transport chain. It moves in the electron transport chain, it gives us the old hypothesis is 2 ATP and the new hypothesis is 1.5 ATP. We are going with the old hypothesis, so we will say NADH will give us 3 ATP and FAD will give us 2 ATP. Is this clear guys? So. Now the topic is that we need to see what are the shuttle pathways. I hope the things are clear now. Now we need to see what are these shuttle pathways. Shuttle pathways. These are the enzymatic pathways that can transport electron of the cytosolic NADH, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide into the mitochondria that can that that can transport electron of cytosolic NADH nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide into mitochondria in the mitochondria these NADH will enter into the electron transport chain and provide ATP as we said earlier one ATP will provide three ATP in the new system says 2.5 ATP it is important that same enzyme should be present on the both side so if this is a cell, this is the mitochondria, this is cytoplasm. So if enzyme A is catalyzing a reaction here, it should be present here inside. We have two kinds of the shuttle pathways. Number one is malate shuttle pathway, another is a glycerophosphate shuttle pathway. Malate shuttle pathway is more effective 
it is present in the liver heart and kidney however this glycerophosphate shuttle is uh, not that much effective it is less effective particularly in human so malate shuttle pathways i am giving you first a, a brief idea of this and then we'll go to the uh, actual cycle so just see this one first of all this one this is an oxaloacetate oxaloacetate is a four carbon compound one two three four and then you can see carboxylic acid and then keto group and then two hydrogen and then carboxyl group so there is an enzyme known as maleate dehydrogenase so this is a substrate oxaloacetate this substrate is converted into product which is called maleate that's why it's called maleate shuttle and then we'll we'll see how it provide it it helps in the transport of hydrogen from the cy uh, cytoplasm to the mitochondria so this oxaloacetate it accept two hydrogen nadh this two hydrogen and uh, two hydrogen of the nadh nadh will provide two hydrogen and then it this is reduced it will be oxidized with the help of enzyme malleate dehydrogenase and then this oxaloacetate is converted into malate so see here this is same this position will change into ch2oh chnoh this is same carbon number 3 is same and carbon number 4 is same clear now i hope this this picture is clear to you guys now i am taking you to the actual shuttle actual shuttle now this malate will enter into the mitochondria so now keep this the keep this picture the previous picture in your mind so we have that oxaloacetate here we start here this is the mitochondrial membrane this is the mitochondrial membrane this is cytosol this is mitochondria and this is mitochondrial matrix from here onward is mitochondria okay so step one what will happen oxaloacetate will combine with the nadh two hydrogen will shift from this nadh to the oxaloacetate this nadh will be converted into nad which is oxidized form and then this oxaloacetate as, as we saw in the previous example oxaloacetate will be converted into malate malate is permeable to mitochondrial membrane it will cross the mitochondria enter into the mitochondria okay once it enter into the mitochondria so the same enzyme which was catalyzing this reaction in the cytoplasm malate dehydrogenase the same enzyme is present in the mitochondria as well so the same enzyme again because it is a reversible reaction so the mitochondrial malate dehydrogenase will welcome this malate and as soon as it will it attach with this one so it will bring nad of the mitochondria from inside the mitochondria and take those hydrogen that has been given to this to to this malate by the nadh so then it will take these two hydrogen back and then nad will convert into nadh and the task is completed what was our task our task was to transport these two hydrogen from cytoplasm to the mitochondria from cytoplasm to the mitochondria and then we did this so what, what we did with it we provide these two hydrogen to oxaloacetate oxaloacetate is converted into malate malate transport transfer malate crosses the mitochondrial membrane enter into the mitochondria in the mitochondria this malate was welcomed by malate dehydrogenase enzyme and this enzyme brought nad from the mitochondria and attaches and took two hydrogen from the malate and then converted into nadh and this nadh as per our rule it will enter into the ele uh, electron transport chain and in the electron transport chain it will give us atp and we know that one nadh one nadh molecule with the two hydrogen electron they will enter into the electron transport chain and then when they will move in the electron transport chain it will give us three atp clear this mechanism is done but now we need to regenerate the process we need to regenerate this oxaloacetate because we need to continue the we need the process to be uh, to continue so what will happen now so once the malate will give two hydrogen to this nad and convert into nadh2 so this process is done but what will happen this malate will convert into oxaloacetate now the issue is here that this oxaloacetate cannot cross this mitochondrial membrane directly cannot come back so now here we need to do some tricks what other trick is that there is an amino acid glutamate 
and I hope you would be aware with the process of transamination. Transamination is a process where the amino acid gives its amino group to a keto acid like oxaloacetate. So once the amino acid will give its amino group to the keto acid, the amino acid will be converted into a keto acid and then keto acid will be converted into amino acid, a new amino acid. And this is the process of transamination. So what will happen? This glutamic acid which is present in the mitochondria, it will release its ammonia amino group and this amino group will attach to oxaloacetate and then this oxaloacetate will convert it into new amino acid aspartate. Clear? When glutamic acid releases ammonia, this amino group, and so what will happen? This will convert into here you can see alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate. This process is called transamination and it is catalyzed by the enzyme transaminase. What is transamination? Transamination is a process where amino acid releases ammonia, amino group releases amino group and convert it into keto acid. And this amino group, when it is attached to another keto, keto, group, keto acid, that keto acid is converted into a new amino acid. And this is the process by which the non-essential amino acids are synthesized in our body. Clear guys? Now what will happen? This keto acid, this ke alpha ketoglutarate, this alpha ketoglutarate, it will cross the mitochondrial membrane. It will cross the mitochondrial membrane and enter into the cytoplasm. So here is alpha ketoglutarate in the cytoplasm. This is the protein which will serve this function. So it from one side it will enter the malate and on the other side it will remove the alpha ketoglutarate. It's called antiport system. One is going on the one side, another is coming on the other side. What will happen to this aspartate? Yes, very good. This aspartate will also cross the mitochondrial membrane through this channel and then it will enter into the cytoplasm. This aspartate will also enter into the cytoplasm. Now we have aspartate in the cytoplasm and we have alpha ketoglutarate in the cytoplasm. Clear guys? Now what will happen? The same mechanism will be repeated again. This aspartate when it will enter into the cytoplasm, it will again, because aspartic acid is an amino acid and alpha ketoglutarate is a keto acid, it will again release amino group. When it will again release amino group, this amino group will be accepted by this alpha ketoglutarate and then it will convert into a glutamate amino acid, glutamic acid or glutamate. So when this aspartic acid releases a amino group and this alpha ketoglutarate accepts the amino group and is converted into glutamate, so what will happen to the remaining of aspartate? So the remaining of aspartate is now oxaloacetate. So regeneration of the oxaloacetate. This also again so this is a process of transamination. One process was inside the transamination where glutamate gave the amino group to the oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate was converted into aspartate and glutamate was converted into alpha ketoglutarate. Then alpha ketoglutarate come out into the cytoplasm. Similarly aspartate came out to the cytoplasm and here again next transamination took place where the aspartic acid releases a amino group attaches to the alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate converted into glutamate and by itself it is converted into oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate is ready for the next cycle. Now what we need, we need glutamate inside the mitochondria. We need glutamate inside the mitochondria. So glutamate is easily cross the with the same protein which was shifting aspartate out the same protein will shift the glutamate into the mitochondria and then it will reach to its place again it will reach to its place again but with the help of this with the help of this one with the help of this one with with you with this one with this one with the glutamate with the transport of the glutamate what will happen hydrogen is also one of the hydrogen is also transport inside so this mechanism is called symport for hydrogen it is called symport so hydrogen is also one of the proton is also uh, one of the hydrogen is also transferred inside the mitochondria however aspartate and glutamate aspartate and glutamate they are anti-port they are anti-port because aspartate is going to the cytoplasm and glutamate is coming back to the mitochondria. This pathway is called malate pathway or malate shuttle system. Malate shuttle system. I hope it's clear. Let me repeat it again for you. What will happen when there is a cytoplasmic NAD 
साइटोप्लाज्मिक एनएडीएच साइटोप्लाज्मिक एनएडीएच इन से फॉर एग्जांपल इन ग्लाइकोलाइसिस दिस साइटोप्लाज्मिक एनएडीएच हैज टू बी ट्रांसफर्ड टू द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया बिकॉज़ इट कैन नॉट क्रॉस द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया सो इट विल अटैच विद द ऑक्सैलोसिटेट ऑक्सैलोसिटेट विल कन्वर्ट इनटू मेलेट मेलेट विल ट्रांसफर द माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल मेम्ब्रेन एंटर इनटू द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया इन द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया मेलेट डिहाइड्रोजन एंजाइम विल एक्स वेलकम इट दिस मेलेट एंड ब्रिंग एनएडीएच फ्रॉम द माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया टुक टू हाइड्रोजन फ्रॉम द मेलेट अटैच विद द एनएडी एनएडी विल कन्वर्ट इनटू एनएडीएच टू मेलेट विल कन्वर्ट इनटू ऑक्सैलोसिटेट आवर जॉब is done here process is complete but now we need to regenerate this oxalocytate so oxalocytate cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane so it will get an amino group from the glutamate and it will be converted into aspartate the glutamate will convert into alpha ketoglutarate glutarate will come out as come out uh, to the cytoplasm aspartate will come out to the cytoplasm and then again there will be a transamination so then aspartate will convert into oxalocytate and alpha ketoglutarate will convert into glutamate and glutamate will reverse back to the mito chondria this system is active in the human um, in the human in human systems and uh, in animal systems and it is very active in the liver kidneys the other pathway is glycerophosphate shuttle or glycerophosphate pathway this phosphate is not much active in the human bo uh, human body so what will happen here the here the acceptor is dihydroxy acetone so see this is three carbon compound keto sugar dihydroxy acetone phosphate this is alcoholic group and then this is the third second alcoholic group where the phosphate is added and this is the keto group nadh2 say for example from glycolysis or any pathway it's come and attach will give two hydrogen to this and then this dihydroxy acetone phosphate will convert into glycerol 3 phosphate see here this is converted into glycerol 3 phosphate now the glycerol 3 phosphate can easily cross the mitochondrial membrane so now let's see here any metabolic process that gives nadh and it is present in the cytoplasm and you want to transfer this into mitochondria so what will happen nadh will give two hydrogen to dihydroxy acetone phosphate like this one and then when dihydroxy acetone phosphate accept the two hydrogen it will convert into glycerol 3 phosphate in glycerol 3 phosphate enzyme is glycerol 3 phosphate dehy or glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase nadh will convert into nad this is reduced and this is oxidized now this glycerol 3 phosphate will cross the mitochondrial membrane enter into the uh, uh, mitochondria will enter into the mitochondria so here what will happen here now there is another trick the outside donor in the cytoplasm is an ad but this is the problem of this glycerol phosphate glycerol glycerol phosphate shuttle that its inside acceptor inside uh, acceptor is fad so what will happen this fad will come and take two hydrogen from this glycerol 3 phosphate and then it will be converted into fadh2 and then glycerol 3 phosphate will convert into dihydroxy acetone and then dihydroxy acetone will come back and then it will ready for next cycle the same enzyme glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase is here glycerol phosphate dehydrogenase is here on the cytoplasm but what will happen here this fadh2 when it it is formed it in inner, inner acceptor is fad and then fad will enter into the electron transport chain and it will move in the electron transport chain and it will make energy so we know our previous knowledge that a fad will give us 2 atp 2 atp so this phos this glycerophosphate shuttle it uh, it is a it is a pathway of where one atp less is synthesized because the inner acceptor is fad instead of nad uh, clear guys so let me repeat it again for you what happened in the glycophosphate shuttle the acceptor is dihydroxy acetone and dihydroxy acetone accept the two hydrogen and then convert it to glycerol 3 phosphate glycerol 3 phosphate crosses the mitochondrial membrane enter into the mitochondrial matrix where the acceptor is fad fad take two hydrogen from glycerol 3 phosphate and convert it into fadh2 which enter into the electron transport chain and provide 2 ATP. However, this glycerol 3 phosphate will come reverse back to dihydroxy acetone phosphate. It will come out and then it will, new cycle will be ready. This pathway is not effective in human or animal system. Uh, Malate shuttle pathway is more effective in human and animal system. I hope it will be clear now and there will be no confusion. If there is any question, any comment, let me know. And then uh, we'll uh, move to the next session. Uh, in the our next video. Thank you very much and best of luck.